Hey guys, Kirk here and thank you for joining me on a new video on the channel. In this video we are going to be looking at triplanar projection. We're going to be talking about various things uh, regarding triplanar projection and basically explaining what triplanar projection does. And then we're going to talk about use cases like when you should use it, when not to use it, where to use it and where not to use it. We're also going to talk about UVs on a mesh as that does play quite a big part in using triplanar projection and where not to and then towards the end of the video we are going to be creating a simple shader which projects our texture um, so yeah it's quite an uh, interesting uh, video I'm doing here um, like I say in the title it's going to be for beginners um, so it's just a good explanation to the best of my ability of why we would use triplanar projection uh, before we get started with the actual video, I do want to thank everyone who has subscribed and liked my videos. It's really going a long way. Uh, this week I've reached a milestone, my first one, with the channel. It's seven months old, my channel, and I have now gone over 500 subscribers. I think at this point I get the community tab where I can post to you guys with updates of tutorials I may have coming, with work I'm doing in the background, uh, when not recording, and all that good stuff. Um, I don't mind sharing with you guys. If you're watching this video and you are not subscribed, well, that's a naughty thing to do. Uh, just hit that subscribe button, like the videos as it is free to do so. Okay, so what is triplanar projection? The best way I can describe triplanar projection is if you hold your left or right hand up with your palms facing away, look at the back of your hand and imagine that's a texture and imagine just pushing that texture onto a mesh like a mesh you're seeing in front of you here with this cube and this sphere imagine just pushing or projecting a texture onto that mesh and essentially triplanar uh, stands for the three axes x y and z so you try ing <laughs> no i'm joking you, you try planar in a texture on them three axes based on that mesh itself also it takes into account uh, whether you're in local space or world space uh, but we'll go over that uh, okay so that is essentially how triplanar projection works you're just portraying that texture on an object or an asset or a landscape anything like that you're basically projecting that texture onto whatever you want it to be based off the axes okay so talking about axes i will briefly go over that now so an axis is basically this mesh here that you see this cube in front of you this cube has its own axes, so the pivot point is what is in the centre of this uh, mesh. It's not always like that, you may get a mesh where the pivot point's at the bottom, or if it's a really bad person who's done it, it'll be at the sides and the top. Uh, but generally it's in the middle or at the bottom of a mesh. Uh, you'll see there's a green arrow, a red arrow and a blue arrow. These represent the axes of the world. Even though we're set to local, this is the world axes. So basically I can move this mesh on the X axis. Uh, that's not the X, that's the Y, sorry. <laughs> on the Y axis, the red is the X axis and the blue is the Z axis. Uh, this is very important when trying to project a texture onto a certain axis of a mesh. Uh, like I said, the red is the X. Keep this in mind, red is X, green is your Y and blue is Z. They're very important things to remember when trying to project on an axis of a mesh. Um, as you see, I stated, I put it in world space. Uh, you can also project in local space. I shall showcase that later when we come to build the material. Uh, but you could just simply change. If you watch the pivot point and the axis, if I change this to local space, the pivot changes. Now the local space is relevant to this mesh alone. It doesn't use world space, it's just local space within the world. That's the way this axis works. So this cube at the minute is in local space. If I change this, you'll see the pivot point move to world space. It'll move now to the axis relevant to the world. And by world, I mean level itself, the whole thing. And that is how triplanar projection projects onto an axis. Okay, what I want to run through now is a couple of reasons why you would want to use triplanar projection uh, and why not 
there's very good reasons why you would want to use triplanar projection and there's very good reasons why you wouldn't uh, essentially there's pros and cons so the cons to triplanar projection is it is expensive it's quite expensive to build the material on this channel in the future just let me take this moment on the channel in the future um, the, I'm going to do a tutorial in which we build an advanced version of triplanar projection uh, within the material it's going to have where you could just change from local space to uh, world space on the fly in the material instance and there's going to be various other things where it's more of an advanced projection with six sides instead of just three um, and having to invert and things like that but yeah that's my plan in the future for this channel but anyway so the good reasons to use triplanar projection at the top here you'll see i've got two meshes that are included in the unreal engine starter content when you begin a project and um, this is a good representation this is the model that obviously someone's made in blender or maya or some other so outsourced 3d uh, creation tool um, and so essentially if i put this into wireframe mode you'll see that whoever's built it it's very high poly as you can see um, and you can tell from the triangles and vertices uh, but yeah they built this and when a 3d modeler builds a mesh like this they have to create what are called seams or breaks in the actual mesh and the reason they make these seams and breaks in a mesh is so when they come to create the uvs for the certain model they have to unwrap and once they unwrap the mesh it'll end up like this you can see this big black box that's half transparent in the window here this represents say a texture and when they create seams that's what you're seeing around these wireframe flat surfaces here these are seams that uh, the modeler has broke and when they unwrap it it basically puts all these broken down bits of this mesh what you're seeing here on the screen it breaks it down into little components like this and then the big black box that's half transparent that's the texture and when you come across a mesh, a static mesh or a model like this that's been broken down, the UVs have been unwrapped very well. They're not overlapping or anything like that. It's been broken down very well. This kind of mesh, you would not need triplanar projection. Even though you could, there's nothing stopping you doing it, but you're just wasting the performance. So there's no real need for triplanar projection. On this, on the other hand, this is also free content in the starter content pack that comes with a project. This is also in there. Now, for use case scenario, whoever's modelled this has intentionally done it for metal only, not anything kind of textury, just metal only where there's no seams visible to the naked eye. Uh, it's very good. I like the sculpture itself. It's very nice. I've used it before in a previous project. But uh, it's very nice indeed. But if I come to the UV channel, let's look at that. That UV unwrap is an absolute mess. I'm not surprised by the actual mesh itself, but that is a mess. Um, and with this, if I come to the top here, and we'll throw a texture on here. I'll just put UV, and you see I've got a UV texture. It's already in the material. If I throw this on it, now you can clearly, clearly see. Wait there. If I come to here, and I shall drop the same texture on here, if I click on here, and just put UV. Let's say build, my machine's running a bit slow. Let's let me click on that again, it's not liking it. I'm running a little slow. Just type it again, UV. Yeah, really don't like that. Anyway. I'll use my textures down here. So if we get rid of this, go to masters, turn static meshes off, go to textures. I'm just going to throw this material on here. Just like build for a moment. Okay, so as you can see, this UV texture is now on this cube. It's looking okay. It looks standard. The point I'm making is it's flat. You've got one to eight on each axis, which is great. That's a, just a standard UV texture on this cube and it's all correct. When we come back to this asset, this is the same texture. Let's just turn them UVs off. No, I won't. Uh, this is the same texture, which is wrapped around this object. And because of these UVs in this box, 
it's now got these sharp lines in there they're all different textures different colors you can clearly see the breakup of this texture and that's because all these are crossing the uvs the point i'm trying to make here guys is if you come across a mesh that is bad like this with uv unwrapping this bad i mean like i explained earlier this is the intention this is not really it's meant for metal uh, but the point i'm making is you sometimes very rare but you sometimes come across a model that has got uv unwrapping like this which is terrible and then you get uv unwrapping like this which is awesome on this kind of mesh you would not try use try playing a projection on whereas this asset you would you would definitely try on that uh, some way it still wouldn't look great because of the shape of the mesh but you would still use triplanar projection on it and it's something like that just for demonstration purposes uh, so that indicates the kind of assets that i would and would not use triplanar projection on uh, one more thing we need to take into account is landscapes uh, landscapes a lot of technical artists and environmental artists will use triplanar projection on a landscape uh, you can mix that with a material if you want but keep in mind that triplanar projection is quite expensive uh, so you would want to use it on one mesh alone uh, not a whole landscape or it will drastically slow your machine down depends on the way you build it for me as an environmental artist if i get this kind of issue on a landscape i would just project a texture on based on one axis but that'll make sense either in this video or the more advanced video of triplanar projection that i'm going to do um, but it will just portray on one axis. With a landscape, when you build the material for a landscape, you then go up to here, you'll get landscape, you'll bring a landscape mesh in, and as an environmental artist or some sort of level designer, if you like, they will create some sort of shape uh, or some sort of environment from that landscape mesh. And as a texture is projected on the Z axis, which is vertically downwards onto a landscape, when you deform or create geometry on that landscape, the texture will then get stretched as that vertical part of the landscape becomes vertical. And on the Z axis, that texture will stretch along like cliff sides or craters in the ground or anything like that, it'll become stretched. So at that point, you would use triplanar projection on that certain axis on the landscape so you don't get that texture stretching. Okay, at this point, I feel like I've explained enough as to why you would want to use triplanar projection and why not. Um, I think that's enough understanding uh, to basically understand that triplanar projection projects the texture onto the mesh. Specifically, if you get a mesh that's not been unwrapped by the UVs very well or has no UVs in general, then triplanar projection is quite good. Uh, but if you get, which is 95% of the time, you get a decent mesh in that's been UV unwrapped, you would not need to try playing the project, whereas a landscape, you would. Okay, so what I want to do now, guys, now I feel I have explained myself a little bit, let me just give you a brief overview of what texture stretching is. If I click this little arrow, I'll go to the texture and I'll put it on this sphere. Okay, so the box here at the side, You'll see the projection of the texture is great, whereas on this sphere, it's not. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. You'll see that the texture is wrapped. It's wrapped around the sphere, but in the middle, where the middle points meet up in the mesh, it's then stretched into a little point. And that is what Triplanar tries to stop. Okay, so let's get to the material. Okay, so I'm going to come into masters, come into not textures, I am going to go into materials and then I'm going to go to testing. I'm going to right click and make a material, I'm going to just call this test, uh, try plan. Press enter and I'm going to right click and create a material instance. We don't need to showcase try play the projection on a cube. Uh, because that mesh is completely fine it doesn't need this kind of texture or this kind of material sorry i'll put it on the sphere okay then we're going to open our material if this is your first time opening the material that's completely fine i do have other videos on uh, the basics of material shaders or the material graph as it's otherwise known 
Um, if you're not familiar with this, I would recommend an earlier video, like on my channel. Uh, but if you are, then that's great. Uh, let's resume. I'd expect you to have at least a basic understanding of nodes and all that good stuff. Okay, so we need to think about this logically. We want to project uh, our texture onto an object in world space for now. So the first thing you would need is your world space coordinates. So we're going to right click and just type world. And we're going to get our absolute world position. This node gives us the world position of our object on this, where this material is attached. And it's going to give it our, like I say, world position there. You've got to keep in mind that in Unreal, a cube like this, we click on it, it's one by one by one. And in Unreal, it's, it's shaped as one meter by one meter. They're the scale of a cube. The same for a sphere. It is, let's just reset that. That's one meter by one meter by one meter. Uh, you'll see that this is smaller. That's because a cube is straight and a sphere is not. Okay, so, but the metric system in Unreal Engine is one meter by one meter. So if I come to my tri -planar, tri planar, I've got my world position node. Keep in mind, guys, that this outputs in centimeters. So I prefer to put this into a divide node. If we divide our centimeters into one, if we divide one meter into centimeters, we come with a hundred centimeters. If we get a scalar parameter, oh, wrong thing. Hold S down and left click. And we'll call this UV scale. Right, so get rid of that function. Then we'll simply connect this up. And then, and in here, we'll put a default value of 100, 100 centimeters in a meter. And that's fine, like that. Okay, now comes the interesting part. We need to tell the shader what axes to project our texture on. So first things first, I'm going to hold T on the keyboard and left click, get texture sample. Like so, and now I have got three textures. This is going to indicate that I want this texture to be the X axis. We'll move these down a bit. Then we'll right click here and go to the node comment and we'll put Y axis like so and we'll move this down a bit and we'll right click and node comment this as Z axis. Now we know which is the X, Y and Z axis, the texture for that. First things first, what you should always do when working with texture samples in a material, just highlight all your texture samples and change them from texture asset to shared wrap. I'm going to drag off this. No, I won't do it that way. I'll just highlight a text sample, left control and D and duplicate it. Then I'm going to right click and convert this to a texture object. Uh, the text samples only accept texture objects when you want to display that certain texture onto all three axes. Like so. If I come in here and choose, shall we choose brick? Maybe we'll get a brick texture in here somewhere. We'll just use that. It's arbitrary, we'll use it. So if I put this into the base color, we'll see we've got that brick texture right there. But if I apply each of these textures, you'll see that the oh, right click base color, you'll see that these textures don't change. So what we need to do in the shader now is tell our samples which axes we want to display on. So if we come here into this model viewer here at the side, I want you to focus there on the bottom left. You'll see our axes in world space. We've got X there for red, Y for uh, green is Y, X is red and Z is blue. What I need to do now is to tell my material what axes I want it to project on. So the best way we could do this is to drag off our divide node and get what's called a component mask. Okay, so now we've got our component mask. If we look in this mirror, mirror in this uh, model viewer here in the shader, you'll see like I've just pointed out, we've got the X, Y, and Z axes and they're portrayed with a color. 
Like I explained earlier when I was talking about local space and world space, each mesh and each thing in the world has an axis. And what I need to do is mask out the axes that I do not want to use. And that's the way this works. And this top texture here is our X axis. So this texture is going to portray the texture on this part. If I make it a cube, it's going to portray on this part here. And it'll portray it on the other side. Right, so, so what I need to do is mask out the other two axes. So if I want to portray it on the X axis, I have to mask out the Y axis and the Z axis. Um, you can see there in the viewer that Z is blue and Y is green. So if I tick in here, we've got red, green and blue. If I tick the green and the blue and untick the red, this component mask is now only going to display from the UVs the X axis. So if I drag that into the UVs, right click and connect to base color. You'll see now that the brick texture is being portrayed on the x-axis. If I move over here, well that's all weird. If I look from the top, that's all weird. Because this component mask is masking out them two axes. And now it's just using this axis. Like so. So what I need to do is a simpler thing for the y-axis and the z-axis. So if I duplicate our component ma mask, and I'm going to mask out our red axis, which is X. I'm going to mask out our blue axis, which is Z. And I'm going to untick the green because the green is our Y axis. And this texture sample needs our Y axis. So I'm going to drag that into the UVs there. And you'll see, oh gosh. And you'll see here that we're facing the X. If I connect Y to this, Y axis, you'll see all this has gone stretched. And that is stretched. But now my Y axis is displaying it pretty uh, simple isn't it so if I duplicate this and I want to expose the Z axis so I'm going to tick both red and green and untick the blue and now our Z axis is in play if we right click our RGB and put it in base color you'll see all our sides of that stretch texture and our Z axis on top and you can't see the bottom because it's black but that is now normal what I need to do now is to create a mask in which we can blend all these together and expose them into the uh, base color itself. So the first thing I want to look at real quick, if I open this sphere up, this model, just open it up and you'll see we've got our sphere in. Right, so what I need to, if I come to the top left here, click on show and I'm going to show the normals. And what this is going to do now, guys, it's going to show me the direction in which our normals are facing. Normals work off of vertices. So if I go to wireframe mode, you'll see that all our triangles are in the square, but on each vertice here, there's that green light. And that's displaying to me the direction our normals are pointing in. And what I'm going to do is use them directional normals to portray our mask with for our textures. So our textures are constantly facing out away from the normals. If I close that off, and what I need to do now is the best way to get the normals of a mesh is to use what's called a vertex normal in world space. We're going to use that. Um, this vertex normal is on a range of minus one to one. I just want the absolute value, the zero to one. So if I drag off here and type ABS, we'll get the absolute value of this vertex normal in world space. Um, what I want to do after this is break out. I want to expose all three axes of this vertex normal. So it's using the normal vertices from each axis on the mesh. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to expose it, but I do need to add each axis up and divide it by itself doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to me but i do know that's what we have to do uh, so we're going to add these values together right so we'll add our x and y which is red and green and we'll add that finally with our z axis like so and like i say we do need to divide this value with the absolute value so if we right click and type divide 
like so and we'll plug this divide into the b slot of our divide node and we'll get the absolute value and divide it by our three axes and what i need to do now now we've got a value an official value to blend our textures together i want to break this out again and get all three uh, vectors all three axes if you like uh, because i need to expose them so i can blend each axis with each axis of the texture sample the way we're going to do that we're going to hold m on the keyboard and left click and get three multiply nodes we're going to send our x axis rgb into one multiply the y axis into the other multiply and this axis into there and then we need to get our rgb axes from the breakout of float 3 component and put that in one axis we'll put the green into the y axis and the blue into the z and to get this to display in the base color alone we just need to add these values back together so if we hold a on the keyboard and left click get an add node and we'll plug the x and the y axis and add them together just like we did down here and we'll add them together again like so oh hello we'll do that and we right click and connect to base color as you can see here looks pretty normal we're now projecting our texture onto this asset but it's still a square so it looks similar to this one here but it's not if we make this a sphere you'll start to see now that we're getting that bit of stretching this line you see around here is just the blending of each texture because of the seams but now officially on the x-axis we're projecting that way as you can see on the y-axis we're projecting straight onto it and the z-axis you'll see now we're projecting our brick onto the z-axis as well right, so so we need to try and create some sort of uh, unblend because these are blended together massively so it's portraying the texture but the blend is also wrapping around the sphere so to do this we drag our absolute world position back no we'll not use that we'll use our vertex normals now go we're going to need a power node we'll right click and get a power node mm, i can't remember if it goes before no no we'll get the absolute value and then we'll get the power actually we'll just if you hold left control and left click on your mouse you can drag them remaining noodles out and we'll just drag that base into that absolute value there we'll hold s on the keyboard and left click and what i'm going to call this with an increased value into this power node with the blending here we want to increase it by its power so you get like a power of four a power of eight a power of 16 and so on and so on and that basically reduces that blend and so the blending won't be as mixed in as it is now it'll become a sharper line the more we increase this value so what we're going to call it we're just going to call it blend sharpness right so if i plug that in here you'll see that absolutely nothing changes it's still the same if i increase by four you'll see that texture is starting to reduce in its blend and now we're getting a nice view on that texture on that sphere on that texture and it's all the same height the same width it's projected on all axes of that sphere you can still increase this you can go to a power of eight and it'll further make a sharper line so if i go extreme like 60 you'll see now we're getting that sharp line between the brickwork even though it still looks kind of okay and it's a distance like this you'd know none the wiser like if I put this on a cube, it's always going to work on a cube. So that's probably a bad representation. But here you can see we've got a nice blending. This would be good for our pillows in the scene. You can see, and if I go on the top, I'm projecting that same texture on top. Whereas if I open the wireframe mode on this uh, cylinder, you'll see the wireframe is coming into that one point. Just like the spade does at the top, you'll see the, the uh, vertices are coming into one point. But now we've applied uh, triplanar projection to our mesh. It's now portraying that texture on top correctly. And now you've seen that brick correctly on top. 
and that is essentially what triplanar projection does i'm going to reduce this down i don't like that sharp line i'm going to give this 16 maybe and we're getting faint lines but it's still a nice blend and with that being said guys that's pretty much it now we're projecting our texture if i apply this come back into our world oh that reminds me just let me indicate what triplanar projection is in world and uh, local space as you can see now if i click on this object i'll press f so i can rotate around it with left alt and left click down now i'm on the object if i turn this object you'll see the texture is staying in play if i move it look can you see the texture moving if i move it on the x-axis the y-axis texture moves that's because our texture is sat in world space what i want to do is to be able to rotate it and have our texture that's facing on the top if i go to local space you'll see if i do this it's still the same what i'd like to do is if i'm viewing this in local space i can rotate the texture with the sphere if you can see what i mean so that means i could expose each of these texture samples to a parameter and put a different texture in each one and then I could change it to local space and be able to rotate it to the texture that I want to showcase. It's that simple. Um, but that, guys, is going to come on the more advanced version of triplanar projection, where we expose all the sides of our triplanar projection. We get a smoother blend and we may indulge in the normals. Uh, I don't like playing with the normals with triplanar projection. Uh, because the cost of the actual material itself becomes highly expensive but we'll see but uh, yeah so for now that's it we've got a simple version of triplanar projection i've gone through an in-depth chat about what it does and why you should do it and why you shouldn't do it and all that good stuff um, if you're interested in learning about the more advanced version or you're interested in uh, materials and technical art and level design and environmental art this is a channel for you so hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video guys thank you